So in this lecture, we're going to cover the specification of the general terms for feedback shift register. Namely, we're now going to look at the linear case for feedback shift registers. So linear means that we have a restriction on this function that you see there, namely that this function, this function in x0 till xn minus 1, is only allowed to have linear terms. So there are no products of the two of them, there are no constants. So all that is allowed is the variables times some coefficients. And so we can also draw this now in a more specific way, not as a general function, but as something where each of these state variables gets multiplied by a coefficient. And so the si are going to shift through. So you see here the initial state, but in the next round, we're going to see this shifted by one to the left and so on. Um, but the ci's, they are fixed. These are the coefficients. And then we're summing them up. So that goes up one level. We're taking s0 times c0 plus s1 times c1 plus and so on. At the end, this gets fed back into the s and minus 1 position, or the last position, and the first position gets output. So in general, we're talking about the jth state here. So capital S is going to be my state variables, and the lowercase s are going to be the contents of the state. So capital S sub j consists of the first entry as sj, sj plus 1, till sj n minus 1. We're looking here at the simplest case where everything is over f2. So my coefficients are going to be from f2, and also the state variable is going to be over f2. So here's an example where I'm just randomly choosing some of the coefficients to be 1, some of them to be 0. And of course, where there's a three dots, there's going to be lots of them, and they all will be summed up. I just put symbolically one plus sign there, but there's many of those. I mentioned earlier that we can think of using these feedback shift registers in a stream cipher design. And so here, the initialization vector would be your initial state as zero. So those n variables would be your starting point. And then the key k would just be the coefficients of the LFSR. So everybody has an LFSR, but what is different is what the coefficients are used there. And then the IV would be determining which starting state you have. Since we're just having zeros and ones up here, I can also simplify this drawing a little bit um, by reducing it by one level. And I will just follow the lead from electric engineering so you can think of these as wires which are connected if the coefficient is one and where there is no connection if the coefficient is zero. So here in this example, there is coefficient one for S1. So there's a connection from S1 up and there's a plus taking the input from S0 plus the input from S1. There's no wire from S2 because, well, the coefficient was zero and then so on. Now thinking about it, these coefficients, um, the first one, we always want to be one. So the C0 should always be one because if it wasn't one, we're just holding back on the result for one extra cycle, for one extra round of this thing moving. And that doesn't seem reasonable. So we always want that the C0, the very first one that gets multiplied by the first variable, that one is one. And so our diagrams will always start with this thing, with a little arrow here. And then we just see an upwards arrow for those positions which are non-zero. So here's an example. If our feedback function is x0 plus x2, that means the x0 and x1 come in with coefficient 1, and the x1 comes in with coefficient 0. So our coefficient vectors is going to be 1, 0, 1. So let's draw this. So it's going to be a state size of length 3. And then the coefficient vector is going to be 1, 0, 1. So these are the ones that we multiply with. And then um, below that, actually in the top one, I should have still put a wire from 0 as a, as a general thing. So here I'm always putting pluses, even though anything times 0 does not give any contribution. Um, in the bottom one, I've already left out the 0. So there it's only the two wires that draw out this one. So let's look at what these feedback shift registers can do for us. We have looked at a general example of a feedback shift register, and now let's look at a linear case. Let's take this one which we're just looking at, where when we update the state, we're taking the first entry and the last entry and sum them up. 
And I would always choose the starting state of 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 for my examples. So if at the beginning I have 0, 0, 1, and I'm taking the sum of the first and the last one, then this gives me 1. So in the next step, I will output the 0, which is the leftmost position, and I'll shift in the 1 from the right one over. Okay, now I'm taking again the sum of the outermost positions at 0 plus 1 is 1, shifting 1 over, 1 plus 1 is 0, shifting 1 over, 1 plus 0 is 1, and shifting over again, 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, and at this point I'm back to the state 0, 0, 1. That is my starting state. So at this point it will just repeat over and over. So what I see here um, on the left, on the output side, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, that is the output sequence. And that one will repeat periodically. So here, the shortest time after which it repeats is 7, so this LFSR has period 7. And when you look at the picture, the, the lines there, that has all the non-zero starting states. So when you're looking at just three positions, then there are two to the three possibilities of which we're seeing seven. The only one missing is the all zero. Now what happens when you put in the all zero vector is that you're adding the outermost ones, which gives zero again. So this one is just a repetition of zero, 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 zero. So it has period one and the output is just zero with well, the bar on top to indicate the period. But this is not specific to this LFSR. The all zero state would always give you period one with the output sequence of all zeros. Because what happens there is that you're summing up the, the ci times zero, and no matter what the ci was, uh, R, you would always get zero. Okay, so at this point we have accounted for all of the states. We have state vector of length three, we have found all eight states, and also we should note that this period length seven is maximal. If you have a register of length 3 and the all zero state can't be in there because, well, after the all zero state you're only getting zeros, then the maximum length you can hope for of the period is 7. And that's what we see here. So let's figure out whether this is a normal case or whether this is a special one. So let's look at a slightly modified version. So let's just add an extra term here. Let's take the LFSR where there's all three wires connected. So we're taking the first input variable, the second input variable, and the third input variable and summing them up. Again, I'll start with state 0, 0, 1. So when I'm taking the sum of all those 3, 0, 0 plus 1, I'm getting 1. So now I'm shifting those in and I'm getting this vector. I sum them up. Well, now I have two ones, so that gives me a 0. Shifting 1 over. I'm again having two ones, giving me a 0. Shifting 1 over. And now I'm at 1, 0, 0. It's just odd parity, so that gives me a 1. Now when I shift this in again, then I'm back to the starting state. So in this case, I have a repetition after only four states. So this gives me a, a sequence 0, 0, 1, 1. So it misses four of the eight states. Well, let's take one as an example. We haven't seen the all one state. So what happens with the all one state? So if I take the O1 state and have 1, 1, 1, if I, up, if I sum these up, well, parity is odd, so it gives me a 1 again. And so it means in the next step, I'll output a 1 and I'll shift in a 1, so I'm back to the state that I started from. So this is a period 1 function, which is just outputting 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, last one's missing, and that's also like a mandatory joke necessary, so if you haven't seen the Matrix movie, then you will not get the reference, but as a student in anything computer science, mathematics, cryptography, you should see the Matrix um, as just the mandatory uh, education step. So when you see the lines of code going there, then at the moment it looks all very confusing, but at some point you'll see right through it and you understand all of his arts. Not exactly an original movie quote, but mostly. So missing states now well, we have four states, then we have the all one state, we have the all zero states, of course, so we're still missing two states. So one of them is the one zero one state. And then we update this, we're getting a zero. 
and well the sum of those gets in again as one and so in this case we have a period two of these two states repeating so we have another sequence which is just zero one zero one zero one zero so here the period depends strongly on what starting state we have well we always have a dependence of that because if you pick the zero state it's going to be period one and else it's going to be nice but in the previous example any of those seven different starting states would have given you period one here now we have a case where there's four starting states which give us period four two starting states giving us period one uh, two and then two different sequences both having period one security considerations i've been saying well we want to use these lfsrs for design of stream cycles so i should also ask like hey what's happening here and the reason we're covering LFSRs after covering general feedback shift registers is, well, LFSRs are really special. Having this linear property also means that there's a lot of information given to the attacker. So if you're following the route that I was suggesting that the initial state is just the IV, then that gets sent in clear anyway. So any attacker knows already the IV. The attacker will know how long the registers are. And then there is a relation between the output bits and the current state bits. Namely, each new output is dependent on the previous n inputs and uh, state variables. So if you ever give away any of those output bits in clear beyond the IV, well, only n minus 1 are necessary because I said before that C0 is always going to be 1. Um, then the attacker can solve a linear system of equations and figure out what these CIs are. So that is actually pretty dangerous. Now, of course, also with a one-time pack or with a visionaire, you don't want to give away the stream, so the stream should be secret. But actually, we had some properties of a, of a good stream cipher. So to quote from the stream cipher lecture, a good stream cipher produces a stream of numbers that is unpredictable given any previous portion of the stream, and does not exhibit any non-random statistical properties. One thing we notice with all the LFSRs and in general with feedback shift registers is that you have something which is periodic or ultimately periodic. If this period is long enough, you'll be okay on the bottom item, but of course having something which is periodic is a strong statistical property. So while we can change this to observable, and then if the period is so large that you can't get there, then we're okay on that one, but the top one is an issue. If by just seeing n minus one output bits, you can predict every further output bit because you're getting the whole LFSR, then we actually have a problem. So is this the end of the LFSR lecture? No, of course not. You have seen already there's a part two coming up. Um, the reason we study those here is that we can actually get a lot of information mathematically from these LFSRs so by just looking at the uh, coefficient vector and the length, we can actually predict something about the periods. I mean, if we uh, want to make sure it has a long period, and this should be so long that even a very powerful attacker can't find it out, it would mean that we also have to run through all of those. That wouldn't be useful for design. But the nice feature about LFSRs is that we can actually make reasonable statements and prove things about the length of the period without running through all the states. And then we can use these LFSRs in combination with nonlinear functions in order to build a stream cipher. So those are actually kind of popular when you look at hardware designs because these stream ciphers are very, very cheap. They're very easy to build in hardware. And then you have a small component, which is nonlinear, to remove all these attack problems. Well, that's it for today on linear feedback shift registers. Stay tuned for the second part.